growth also should start and once credit growth starts gold loans would be in demand our non gold loan verticals yes because of this covid we were planning to start good uh, uh, business in last 6 months back after the covid first wave but then soon after the second wave also came so we have actually delayed the uh, the business activity or business growth in the non gold loan business that is why we have seen a degrowth in the non gold loan portfolio both all in the microfinance the home finance and the vehicle finance business but here also we should be seeing business and growth picking up in this quarter rather end of this quarter we should see business picking up and by quarter 3 and quarter 4 we should see better growth in these non gold loan portfolio also our non fund based business which is the broking business has done extremely well this quarter we have registered we have have good growth in the insurance broking business and uh, good profits have come from there also as far as the sri lankan subsidiary is concerned it has uh, it has actually been more coming out from the non gold loan business and it is now personally doing only gold loan business as of date their gold loan portfolio is more than 53% of the total book so we are consciously regrowing the non gold loan portfolio in sri lanka and doing mainly gold loan business and they have added branches also there which is actually uh, accelerating the progress of the gold loan and we hope that uh, by end of next year in the next 18 to 24 months we should see sri lanka business also a mirror image of muthoot finance with more than 90% of gold loan portfolio so gold loan business there also is very good so uh, we have been able to uh, curtail all our uh, all our uh, expenses also so this time also our expenses have been uh, put under control and uh, that is those are one of the reasons, some of the reasons why our portfolio our profit has also been uh, okay uh, rather we have been able to make and the third rank of profit otherwise uh, yes all the other businesses as i said we will be restarting the non gold business maybe after 2 3 months a little more uh, little more uh, little more uh, speed and the gold loan business yes as i said earlier has started doing well and we should see good growth in gold loan business in the next all the all the coming months going forward with that i think uh, i will stop here and uh, maybe wait for any questions or clarifications from the from your side thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question anyone who has a question may press star and 1 Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Harsh Shah from L&T Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, sir. So, sir, my first question is regarding uh, how is on-ground situation uh, when you entered Q1 versus uh, when you are exiting the Q1 and as on July. and uh, how has been the uh, customer feedback in terms of repayment uh, how has been your collection trend how has been your overall business trend uh, when you are uh, when compared with the start of q1 as well as uh, the exit of q1 that is my first question and second is sir can you just throw some light on the drop in yields that we had in this quarter what was the main reason of that and how will that look like once we uh, enter q2 and uh, remainder of the financial year 22 Yeah, thank you see uh, as i said earlier the covid impact was very prevalent in the last all the months in the last quarter that means april may june 
the covid impact was very severe and many branches were not open branches were open partially only so that was the reason we saw uh, a very tepid growth in the first quarter now as i said earlier also things are looking up business is picking up all the branches everywhere is open and uh, people are coming for gold loans the repayments and collections see there is no emi collection in a gold loan it is only bullet repayment so people are coming to uh, repay the loan they are coming for fresh loans they are coming to pay interest so i think it's almost as business as usual going forward from here now the drop in yield the drop in the yield is always there is a one uh, percent uh, uh, fluctuation in the yield every quarter. Sometimes it is 22, sometimes it is 21, sometimes it is 20. It goes back to 21, etc. There is nothing. Uh, uh, there is no specific reason for that. That uh, drop in yield. It is because uh, sometimes occasionally we give uh, different uh, schemes for customers also. So that must have been some of the impact of that only. I don't think there is anything else to that because we have not consciously done anything to reduce the yield. Right, sir. And just one last question, sir. How much of, uh, have we, first of all, have we done any auctions in this quarter? If yes, or can you just tell us the quantum? Yeah, we have done about 37 crores of auction. 37 crores, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it from my side. All the best and thank you. Thank you very much. We will take a next question from the line of Amit Ganatra from ACFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I had a you know question on the balance sheet uh, movement QOQ. So effectively, on a flat you know quarter on quarter, even your borrowings increased by 1,800 odd crores, and this was on a balance sheet which was already carrying excess liquidity till previous quarter. And uh, even in your presentation, if you see QOQ cost of funds have gone up, uh, so incremental borrowing cost also seems to be higher. So can you explain what has uh, happened this quarter? Uh, why this kind of you know balance sheet movement, uh, as well as the uh, you know increase in cost of funds QOQ? So uh, essentially, the absolute amount of uh, uh, no, finance cost has gone up. That is because uh, you know. Uh, the level of borrowings which was there in the Q4, uh, because of the uh, growth in uh, the Q4, uh, you know, uh, that borrowings have gone up. Second, uh, no, uh, no, there was a turn in uh, uh, the borrowing. So we had about 1,000 uh, crores of uh, NCD repayment. But uh, in uh, Zoom, but we had raised some uh, about 1,900 crores of 1,700 crores of NCDs in April. So that was carrying as an additional liquidity in the uh, books. But uh, no, net at the end of uh, June, you won't see that uh, you know additional amount which has raised. So for almost like uh, uh, no, uh, uh, two months, we have incurred additional expenditure on uh, uh, no on those additional borrowings which we have done. And uh, in terms of cost of borrowing, I think uh, you know, we should see that coming now. Uh, you know, probably as a little bit of a averaging impact also has uh, impacted the calculations. But otherwise, I think you know, in the next one or two quarters, we should uh, see a, a significant decline uh, happening in cost of borrowing. And what should we expect on liquidity? Because you know, liquidity also QOQ has actually gone up. Excess liquidity that you are carrying on the balance sheet. See, I think, uh, uh, you know, at least for some time we have to uh, maintain this level of liquidity, you know, uh, like we have uh, explained in previous quarters also. One, uh, you know, because of the uncertain times, uh, you know, it's always better to carry excess liquidity. And it gives a lot of flexibility for us also to negotiate better rates, etc. So we don't want to be stretched in terms of the liquidity portion. Second, uh, you know, it helps us in planning for the growth because all of a sudden when the growth starts happening, uh, we don't have to run around for uh, you know, uh, raising funds. So it helps planning uh, our uh, growth uh, plans, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, meeting our growth targets. Third thing is that you know, the liquidity coverage ratio also has been implemented, so we need to ensure that you know, these are all uh, maintained. 
uh, what we need to look at is how we can increase the returns of the excess liquidity uh, uh, which we are carrying. We are taking certain steps uh, in the next uh, uh, couple of quarters to increase the yield on uh, these idle uh, funds which we are maintaining. But I think, uh, you know, at least for a few quarters, we have to maintain this excess liquidity uh, in the books for, uh, you know, planning our, uh, uh, you know, uh, meeting our business targets. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Prashant Sridhar from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just two questions, sir. One, uh, on the gold loan market, uh, if you could just give us some idea of the on-ground situation, uh, maybe not specific to you, but I guess Mutual Finance doesn't do much options, but, you know, a couple of news items saying that uh, increased options or increased uh, non-repayment, etc. Uh, just some idea around that. And uh, for Mutual Finance, on the non-gold loan businesses, uh, if you could give us some idea on stage two and restructuring. Uh, and maybe collection efficiency on the MFI side. See, uh, <clears throat> on ground, the gold loan business is growing now. And if you want a comparison with, there was some uh, some talk about uh, in the news also about uh, too much of auctions coming, etc. Uh, but I think that those came because some of other, some other company had given short term loans. So when they give short term loans it becomes uh, non-performing or a technical non-performing becomes quickly. Uh, so in order to not to show uh, too much of NPS in their books, they would have done auctions. But uh, since we give the loan for 12 months, uh, we have time. And uh, none of these loans are becoming a probable loss item because the present gold price can support even, even in a bad time for these. So we don't uh, foresee any loss except uh, on these accounts. So that is why we have been maintaining them. So probably uh, if need comes, we will also be doing some auctions. That is a regular feature, monthly, quarterly auctions. Probably last, of, last quarter, because of the lockdown, etc., also auctions were very low. But uh, going forward, we should see some auctions also. Last year also we did 400 crores of auctions. So similar thing, we should see this year also. Uh, then your uh, next question is about the uh, collection efficiency section in the other verticals. The other verticals, uh, they are uh, having the, uh, like, uh, the stage two and restructuring and uh, collection I efficiency. Know. Of the other. I, know, I know, I know, I know. So uh, the other verticals have this EMI calls. So, uh, so because of that, they have stage two assets, etc. And the collection efficiency uh, for them with the stage two is. Uh, uh, for the uh, home finance, uh, it, uh, it is uh, uh, April it was 84, May it was 83, June it was 87, and July it is 88. Uh, that is uh, on a portfolio of 1,700 crores. And for the uh, Mutut money, uh, <coughs> which has a portfolio of 330 crores, the collection in April was 71, May 65. June 76 and July 77. We see uh, things improvement also happening. Happening. So uh, going forward, it should only improve. But as I said, unlike the gold loan business, all the other businesses have the market problems. Uh, every every NBFC doing uh, vehicle finance and affordable home finance has the same issues. I'm sure they, they, we will all come out of it uh, uh, going forward. But the redeeming fact we hear is that our vehicle loan portfolio is only 333 crores and our home loan portfolio is only 1,700 crores. Sure, sir. Uh, anything on the MFI, sir? And uh, any uh, idea on the research today? MFI, the, uh, the March was uh, collection was 94, April is 89, May 71, June is 65, 66. That's how it is. So mainly because of the lockdowns. Mainly because of the lockdowns. MFI, you need to go there and collect the most I of it. I have a stage 3 asset of uh, 200. Stage 3 of 112 and stage 2, 283 crores. Out of, out of uh, 3,100 crores. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, very helpful. 
Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Seishwan from Point 72. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, on the growth part, uh, I guess to hit our minimum target 15%, uh, there's about uh, mid single digit curve. Uh, Q on Q go for the next three quarters. Uh, do, do you mind give us some color on how should we think about the trajectory of that growth? Is it more like a you know gradually step up and more like a half weighted, or how should we think about it? Thank you. See, uh, regarding the growth, we uh, we have been giving a guidance of 15 percent last three four years, and going forward also we would like to give the same guidance. But our actual performance would have been much better. Last year, it was uh, instead of 15%, it was 24%. Prior to that year, it was 22%. And prior to that, it was 18%. So it also is a ma uh, matter which of the economic activity, etc. So as I said earlier, uh, if things really look up well and uh, credit demand picks up, uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first person, uh, the, the people come, to gold loan for the first part, first time, uh, the first uh, uh, loan they'll take will be from a gold loan, which is the most easy. So we should see good growth pick up if the economic activity picks up. But we said 15% because that's a, an estimate we have been given over the last several years. I'm sure we should be able to do better than that. Oh, that's good, thanks. Uh, so if I look at last year, you know, uh, the, in the, after the first wave, September, we have a very tremendous uh, good growth. I'm just wondering whether we are looking at similar kind of situation for the uh, second wave here, or there's some fundamental difference? Yeah, because the first wave happened in the month of March, April, and May. And this time, it happened in April, May, and June. That means all the three months of this quarter were affected. Whereas last year, one month of the previous year, previous year and the two months of the second quarter were affected. So quarter one of last year was little better than quarter two of uh, this year. So quarter two, things started looking up only by end of June. So I think July, August also, things should be looking better. Right, but last year, September quarter, we have a very good quarter. And uh, I don't know whether it's because of a pent up demand or anything. Do you see that repeating this, this year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can expect good demand. I don't know whether we should see the same demand of last September in this September also, but we should see definitely better, uh, better demand uh, for gold loan next two, three months, surely. Got it. Uh, so last one is on the new side. So understand that there's sometimes we'll give some schemes. So are we are we thinking of you know giving a little bit more promotional slash schemes to kickstart the demand uh, in the near term, or how should we think about that? Yeah, I think we have some good budget for uh, sales and marketing work. We do quite a lot of advertisements also, and we also uh, bring up newer and newer schemes probably offering new schemes, various schemes, etc., to keep some excitement within the employees and also with the customers that new schemes are coming. Also, all sorts of schemes so that we keep the excitement both within the employees as well as with the customers. So we have to do some of, we have to be seen doing some of these things to generate newer and newer business and it has almost always paid off. Our advertisement and marketing has always paid off. So actually, we can see a lot of advertisements in the local newspapers we have started last two, last two months. And uh, now that uh, the pandemic, uh, the COVID uh, protocols, etc., are relaxed, we have uh, started giving more and more advertisements. So that's coming more in the print media as well as in the TV, uh, mostly in the local languages because the customers there are local language customers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhijit Tebrewal from Motila Oswal. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, I think I first need to kind of uh, congratulate you for um, all the uh, grit and resilience uh, that you have kind of demonstrated this quarter and last year. 
uh, during such tough times. Uh, so, uh, my question was more around, uh, that we have already touched upon it uh, briefly in some of the last questions. But what I try, I'm trying to understand is, uh, whatever demand or disbursement that we saw during 1Q, was it also a function of the fact that uh, southern markets, which are, I would say, your strongholds, uh, were seeing relatively stringent lockdowns uh, compared to the rest of the country, even, uh, let's say, uh, towards the end of June. And, and a related question here, sir, when you say demand is picking up, uh, is it that de demand is, is more strong in the northern part of India compared to the southern markets? See, when we say demand, see, when uh, businesses open up, it is that at that time that people need funding to restart business, to, uh, to do extra stocking, etc., stocking of their goods. So our main customers are uh, small shopkeepers, traders, small businessmen. When their business actually opens up, it is a time they need money. And that is the time they come for the gold loan. So uh, North India also, I think, uh, Delhi had a very tough lockdown uh, last two, three, two months. But then now things are opened up. Tamil Nadu, etc. is now fully opened up. Kerala is not fully opened up, but of course our Kerala market or Kerala business share is very little. It's only about 3% of our portfolio. But still, some branches, some places are open, some places were open till uh, afternoons, alternate days, etc., etc. Now I think everywhere it is opened all the days. So, so that's what I said when business is picking up. Small businesses should pick up. That's what we should. When small businesses pick up, they need money, and that's the time they come for a gold loan. So that's what I was saying. So it is not that uh, our stronghold markets. We are strong in many places, and uh, it's not that we are strong only in some place. We are strong everywhere. But then it is only up to the market which opens up or the business activity which starts. When the business activity starts, we are in demand, or gold loan is in demand. Sure, sir. So the, the the second question that I had is uh, why why we are not uh, in favor of auctioning uh, a lot. In other words, if you look at the last three fiscal years, uh, the quantum of auctioning for you has actually been kind of coming down on a YOY basis. But I mean, referring to the same article which talked about a lot of auctions for for one of the other gold lenders, uh, that 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 same article also said that Q2 is 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 exactly 9 to 12 months after we saw a peak in gold prices. And because a lot of uh, lenders like yourself, or for that matter, banks, who, who lent at 90% LTV uh, back then, uh, might see higher auctioning in 2Q. What are your thoughts on that? See, auctioning happens when customers are, uh, are abandoning the gold. So we have over the period of, over the last several decades, we have been having a, a definitely a much better relationship with our customers than many others. We are always in touch with them. We, we are collecting part interest from them. Although it is good for a year, we give schemes for uh, prepayment of interest. So if they pay interest quarterly, we give some good discounts. If they pay monthly, we give better discounts. They pay half yearly, we give discount. So, in spite of have giving a loan for one year, we keep constantly collecting interest from them. We keep constantly engaging with them. That is why we are able to uh, not have to go to the last resort of auctioning. So, of course, we also do auctions. We have done auctions. Uh, uh, two years back, we did about 1,000 crores of auction. Last year, we did only really about 400 crores of auction. So, that is actually very minuscule when we compare with the a lack of crore. We lent 1,25,000 crores last year and of that only 400 crores are auctioned. That means it's a good sign that we, our contact with customers is better. So, but when somebody looks only at the LTV and give it at 80%, 90% and they have no other ways of contacting customer and of collecting it, then they have to go for auction. So, that's what I always say that uh, gold loan is a very operationally intensive business. People think it is very easy, but it is very operationally intensive, operationally challenging, and uh, many people think just uh, one cut, give it, wait for it, doesn't come, auction it. 
that is not how gold loan is done that is why customers such customers don't go back to them for the second loan we have more than 70 80% of our customers coming back to us late from that is why we have the better relationship with the customers that is nothing that is something which we have developed and we have nurtured over the last several decades which uh, have which is not been able to uh, copy or emulate by the new players so they have to they have only one thing they give the loan it doesn't pay auction it that is not the way gold loan business is done and just to clarify you know we never said that uh, you know we are not in favor of auctioning or we are in favor of auctioning it is all need based action which is required uh, just like the minister mentioned thank you uh, mr tabrewal may we request you to move to the next i mean um, return to the queue as we have several participants waiting for their turn thank you before we take a next question we would like to request participants to restrict their questions to two per party time permitting you may come back in the queue for a follow up question our next question is from the line of subranshu mishra from systematics please go ahead hi right, sir thank you for the opportunity and uh, i've got a few questions one is i want to understand uh, the direct process of uh, auctions as such what kind of pricing we use who are the bidders and uh, what are the various safeguards for any kind of foul play that can happen in any kind of auction is it centralized or is it done in situ in branches that's the first question sir second is uh, actually database what is the interest accrued as of this uh, this quarter versus 1q fy 21 and what is the percentage of aum which is more than 1 lakh uh, rupees of the kind okay so uh, auctioning and uh, auctioning uh, the properly is an art in itself is an art in itself and uh, we do our auctioning at the branches at the regions in the in the districts and in the states so it is not centralized it is done at the branch level so we ensure that uh, we get a reasonable uh, a correct price and we have not had any uh, what should we say any frauds etc in the auction process because we are we are very much uh, in the ground we know the ground realities so we see we ensure that whenever we auction we get the best price so there are always chances of the auctioneers or jewelers coming forward and ganging up etc that happens but since we have been doing it for last several years we do it and we also have uh, e auctions we do online auctioning also so that is also started now so i think we are the few company one of the few companies which are doing this e auction this also helps in this uh, transparency and also getting better yield on the whole on portfolio now your your question about yeah interest accrual as of june uh, 21 is uh, 2925 uh, crores uh, last year june it was 1835 uh, crores and a gold loan a uh, more than 1 lakh ticket set percentage of aum in this quarter i think it should be uh, almost the same It will be 53%. 53. Thank you, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Prakhar Agarwal from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. A few questions. Uh, to start with, uh, when I look at your overall gold portfolio, of, uh, so there is other loan component which is 500 odd crore. So we have seen a significant run down in that. If I were to look at from a two years perspective. uh but what what explains this what is the outlook on on this segment going forward so on on personal yeah other loans has a uh, uh, unsecured person loan that is about uh, 330 crores and uh, we also have uh, you know about uh, you know uh, business loans and uh, miscellaneous uh, loans of about uh, uh, 70 70 crores and uh, we also have given up a loan to subsidiary uh, about uh, the the remaining portion will be loan to subsidiary that will be uh, about 200 crores no no right loan to subsidiary is about 120 crores that's so uh, no you are look, uh, no asking about the growth uh, plus perhaps uh, no you uh, know unsecured loans will uh, gradually uh, go 
similar uh, you know, business loans also you know we have a, a focus that will also that is currently about 60 crores that will also grow but of course not uh, to the extent of the growth in uh, gold loans. Okay, uh, so second question is in form of uh, your growth that we have been saying. Uh, uh, if I were to look at last eight ten quarters and, and see how your AEM growth has been, large part of that has come from a value uh, segment. And, and uh, at least when I look at from a volume perspective, growth has been relatively softer. What explains this and how do we see this going forward? You really understand your question. What is that? So overall AEM growth that we have seen, if I were to look at year-on-year -year comparison, Large part of that has come from uh, AUM per gram increase rather than tonnage increase. If I were to just look at uh, the numbers, it, has, it, had, it is at just uh, lower single digits, while your AUM per gram growth is in excess of 20% thoughts. Uh, so how do we see this, what explains this and how do we see this going forward? So it essentially that means that newer customers are, are essentially lower or it, it, how do we see this going forward? New customers, see, you should understand something. I think we have been explaining it the last two, three quarters also. When a customer reached 50,000 rupees, earlier he had to bring 40 grams. Today he needs to bring only 30 grams. So, it's, it's evident there. So, in 30 grams he gets the same amount what he got for 50,000 last time. So, he will bring only 30 grams and the rate per gram will be higher. So, today he will not expect the uh, rate per gram at the over rate. He will be only what is required. So, so the rate per gram will be concurrent with the current price only. If the gold price is high, the rate per gram also will be high. If the gold price is low, the rate, price or the, uh, low, the rate per gram will also be low. Suppose the, rate, uh, the gold price falls, the rate per gram will also fall. That's the explanation, sir. It also reflects... Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Agarwal. Uh, we'll maybe request you to return to the queue. There are this many is parts just a follow-up on this. Uh, any wishes uh, done. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Manant Jorivala from ICSA Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, could you share how much total provisions are carried on the standalone and consolidated loan book as a percentage of total loans? And how much of, the, of this would be, say, probably excess in your opinion across the businesses right now? So, uh, you know, the ECL provision as of June is uh, 650 crores. In addition to that, we have some excess provision retained in the books, uh, about 295 crores. So, totally we have about, uh, uh, you know, 945 crores of uh, provision sitting in our books. And, uh, uh, you know, consolidated it will be uh, another uh, maybe 100 crores more. The gold loan portfolio has about 945 crores. crores. The yeah. subsidiaries have about uh, 150 crores, I think. So. That is the total provision. Excuse me? Uh, that is the total provision in subsidy, right? Uh, total provision, yeah. yeah. Yeah, another 150 crores. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Banti Chawla from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, just one query. Uh, if we see the employee expenses, uh, which is approximately 231 crores in this quarter, if we compare with the last four quarters, in fact, it is the lowest among this uh, last year, same quarter, we know there was a complete lockdown. But after that, in Q3 and Q4, there were hikes and all those things happening because the business picked up. So we thought that run it could continue in Q1. And if you can share how this employee expenses will uh, run it will go in next three quarters. No, I think uh, uh, no employee expense is almost similar to uh, uh, no Q1 of last year. Uh, uh, no March, uh, uh, no there are uh, certain performance incentives etc. as a part of the asset compression which gets added up. So uh, uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, no consistent of across the uh, last several years. So uh, no net net there are, there is no much of a change in the employee benefit expense. So for full year, uh, what should the run it we can, uh, as compared to FI21, what FI21 could be the... Last, uh, no, no, uh, 1006 crores is the last year full employee cost. We should expect something similar uh, this year also. It all oh. depends upon uh, no, the various pay hikes, etc. that happen at different points of time. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. 
Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Alpesh from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, and thanks for giving me the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Sir, first question is regarding the new customer acquisition. Despite they have, having a lockdown, we see that the new customer acquisition is quite strong in this quarter. So, uh, can you just throw some light on that? That's the first part. Secondly, as far as growth is concerned, why the quarter and AUM is flat QOQ? While the quarter and AUM is flat QOQ, but uh, uh, did we see a decline in April and May month considering the interest expense, interest income is down quite sharply on a quarter and quarter basis? And lastly, uh, what is the reason for a QOQ decline in the other operating expenses and the director's remuneration? Thank you. Uh, see, the, uh, both in, what is the first question? The a new customer. New customer. Ah, we, were, we were able to add about 50 or 50,000 50, plus new customers because in the last uh, uh, April, uh, May and June, we were in many parts where it was open, we were able to get fewer customers. That's actually uh, 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 kudos to our marketing and sales team that they were able to add new customers. Uh, in this uh, difficult time also, it's a, definitely a, uh, a good achievement from the marketing side because in the month of June, etc., we had started good advertisements also, newspaper advertisement, etc. So that must have been some of the reasons why new customers would have come. Uh, then the next question. Uh, the operating expense. Oh. So uh, the operating expense, uh, uh, you know, for the current quarter, uh, uh, you know, this will be the fourth quarter of last year, is low because uh, fourth quarter of last year it was uh, I know the CSR expenditure uh, ah, yeah. book was about 45 crores, which is not there in the current quarter. So that is uh, you know, one reason why uh, the expenses. Second the reason is the advertisement expenditure quarter on quarter it is low by about 17 crores. And is there any dunking up of director's remuneration in the fourth quarter? It is usually paid at the end of fourth quarter. Amen. Okay. Um, uh, could you please return? The, yes. I'm sorry, the, um, the questions are not completely answered. There is a lot of questions. Uh, regarding the AUM number, the uh, April and May month, did you see a decline into AUM and June? It's, it's like. Uh, so, uh, no, if you look at, uh, no, uh, uh, for Motor Finance, it was almost like uh, stable. Uh, no, uh, in fact, if you look at the gold loan piece, uh, no, we have grown by about 100 plus crores. So it was almost at the same uh, level. Now one thing which you can uh, you know, differentiate between last quarter is that last quarter, uh, and, uh, last year, uh, this quarter, uh, it completely shut, but May onwards we have fun uh, no, functioning. But this year what happened was that though uh, no, it was open, it was not consistent. So the branches were on and off, uh, they are opening and closing. So throughout, uh, you know, uh, on and off we were able to open the branches, but it was not consistent. So if you look at the uh, disbursements, so this happened last year, uh, this year, uh, uh, no, the first quarter, the disbursements and collection numbers are uh, uh, lower than last year. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Viral Gandhi from 91 Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, just about your... Uh, Nim, um, I saw Nim um, fell this quarter, uh, fell quarter on quarter. I know earlier on you mentioned that um, you occasionally offer um, schemes. Um, could you just try, just give me a bit more detail on, on why Nim fell and, and also what your thoughts are on where Nim will go for the rest of the fiscal year? So, uh, just to give a perspective, you see, Bullone is a very short term product and, you uh, know, uh, like uh, Ambassador mentioned, last year we dispersed about uh, 125,000 crores, but the portfolio which is remaining outstanding in the books is only about 50,000 crores. So uh, there is a churn which happens in the portfolio, and quite often there is a tweaking in terms of the schemes. And added to that, because of the COVID, you know, a lot of these uh, discounts, etc., have been offered at, you know, across the, uh, you know, uh, you know, various schemes. So all these have an impact, uh, but at the end of the day. And generating a return on asset of around seven, seven, uh, seven and a half percentage, which is you know, you know, a very attractive, and I am generating a return equity of almost like a twenty five percentage. Okay, and the future direction? See, I think uh, you know, 
we are deriving about uh, no, 7 to 8 percent, I think that should uh, that certainly continue uh, unless our leverage is significantly going to improve from the percent 2.7. So, uh, you know, I think uh, no, 7 to 8 percent is something which you should uh, you know, look at at least for the near future. Okay, uh, thank return you. Return return return. Return. Okay, last one was just on impairments. We're quite high this quarter. Why was that? So, uh, no, uh, no, and in there it is, uh, no, the uh, impairment is based on the loan assets as well as the interest accrued. So, uh, no, both uh, together, uh, uh, no, the, the provisioning, uh, etc. Uh, uh, amount is uh, quantified. Uh, and second, you know, and there is a movement in terms of uh, from stage one to stage two and stage two to stage three, as well as uh, you know, crisscross, and, you know, the changes. It also has an impact on the, uh, you know, uh, 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 impact on the total amount of impairment. So, to answer your question, the current uh, quarter uh, impairment is primarily because of uh, the uh, increase in uh, interest accrual and correspondingly uh, the increase in the e sale provision. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rick and Shah from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just have one question. I wanted to better understand uh, the process of uh, online gold loan business. Understand that around 30% of gold loan customers transact online, but what's the entire process in terms of uh, onboarding, uh, them doing the transactions and the disbursements, everything? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, online transactions means uh, actually uh, uh, we encourage customers to transact online, that is to take their money online, to repay their money online, to pay the interest online. Actually we have a, a, a hybrid system of actually in, uh, assisted online boarding. So because our customers are not the high end customers, we have to assist them initially to onboard them. So we encourage them to pay up the interest, pay interest or take further loans on the gold through online. So actually uh, more than 70% of our customers transact online, but they don't do 100% of the transactions online. If the branch is open, they would rather come to the branch. If they have a difficulty in coming to the branch, lockdown or any other thing, they use the online business. But most of them are tuned to do it if need be. 90% uh, of our customers prefer to come to the branch if it is open. If it is not open, it's a type that use this uh, online methods. And this online also, we onboard them with assistance. So that is what. But then here also, the originating a loan, bringing the gold to the branch cannot be done online. The customer has to come to the branch and give the gold loan. When the customer wants to take back the loan, he has to take back the gold he has to come to the branch to take back the code. All the other trans financial transactions, you can do it online. And they, we, are enc we encourage them to do it, especially when all these uh, lockdowns, etc. happen. Many customers used to pay their interest, principal, take more uh, top-up loans, etc. on this online business. So uh, it has actually picked up well. But uh, if given a chance, customers prefer to come to the branch to transact. Okay, understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Shreya Shivani from CLSA. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, this is Piran, engineer from CLSA. Uh, congrats on the quarter. Just a couple of data keeping questions. Firstly, uh, if you have it offhand, what is the breakup of this 2,700 crores interest income? What is the breakup between regular interest and penal interest? Penal interest is very little, sir. See, penal interest normally applies for loans Okay. So that will be a very less, very, very less, very less. Okay, because in the past there have been quarters where I. So I, 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 I understand what you're saying. Uh, when we auction a gold loan or when somebody has taken or we keep the gold loan more than 12, 16, 18 months, at that time they pay penal interest. That is when we had we keep use. At some time we had a. NPA of about 8% or 5% or 4% etc. At that time, lot of old loans were there. When those loans get closed, they give lot of penal interest. Now our NPA is only about 1%. So 
So that means loans above 12 months uh, is very little. So on that only very little period interest can come now. Earlier when they had accumulated a lot of old loans, then the interest plus period interest was there. If that was what you were referring to earlier. Yeah, so, so for the last few quarters, we've not had uh, much penal interest. Yeah, 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 yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, my second question is for Omen, sir. Uh, you mentioned that we're keeping high liquidity to comply with LCR. So I was just curious to know what our LCR is. And secondly, you know, uh, what are our undrawn credit lines from banks, you know, to uh, cater to the growth if it comes. Why do we need to have on balance sheet liquidity? Why not just keep undrawn credit line? Sir, this undrawn credit balance sometimes doesn't come if there is an issue. If there is a market hiccup or something is happening in the market, banks just will not give the undrawn credits also. They will see some excuse not to give it to them. So it is a risk uh, just to keeping everything as undrawn credit. And one final morning when there is a real demand and there is some, some, uh, uh, some commotion in the market, banks will just delay it. So that is something which we should not, and for us, gold loan, a customer comes for a gold loan, we have to give the gold loan. If we don't give the gold loan, that is one of our main USP. Customers know that if they come to Muttu, they can get money. So at the cost of some, uh, what should we say, some interest loss, it is better to keep some uh, funding with us. That is the policy, that's the thought behind keeping a little extra. Of course, we understand that it is interest negative. There is a negative carry. But I think overall, uh, we should see that it helps in the business growth. That is why we keep this. Not that we are aware that there is an interest loss, but then it helps in the overall business. And uh, Oman always says that uh, it helps in negotiating for better rates with the bank, with other lenders also. Oh, okay. So may I ask you one more question? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just go ahead. Uh, no, and, and this question has been asked before, but I, I'd really want uh, want some clarity now. We've seen banks compete quite heavily. Like State Bank of India's gold loan book has gone from five six thousand crores to twenty thousand crores, and the rate at which they are growing, maybe you know, who knows? In a few years, they might even overtake us. So, like, what what exactly is our strategy here uh, to counter competition? Because while while this may be temporary or not, we don't know right now. It may turn out to be a more permanent sort of competition. But nevertheless, we need to have some strategy to you know keep competitors at bay, and especially such large competitors. So have we really chalked out something? Just one point to clarify. So what we heard is, you know, State Bank of India has a very large portfolio, not the number which they are disclosing now, you know. Because you know, a lot of these loans are uh, hidden under the agri portfolio, etc. So they have now started disclosing only the non agri portfolio. So they have a very large portfolio. And you know, what we hear is that banks have put a lot of restrictions now on this agri gold loans, etc. So gradually we will see this you know, agri loan portfolio getting shifted to the non agri portfolio. So we will not, we'll not be surprised if there, you know, suddenly we see these numbers going up. So it will be only a shift from the agri portfolio to non agri portfolio. Uh, anyway, to, to, uh, to ward off, you can't, we can't ward off competition. We can only do our work better. So I can't wish others not to do the business. Let them do the business. But then we, as I said, we will try, we will try our best to see that we grow at least 15% year on year. So we have some things some schemes, etc. in our mind, so that uh, to, to see that uh, we are able to grow the 15%. I think uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that is what we are here for. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Ankit Cheda from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, so my question was uh, on, on uh, 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 this uh, yield. Uh, for the first quarter, uh, usually uh, you said that it's a quarter phenomena. Sometimes it's uh, 22, sometimes it's uh, 21 and 23. But uh, when I see uh, a trend uh, for last two years, that is FY20 and uh, 21 last quarter June, uh, and then also uh, previous uh, years June, uh, there also the trend is definite in terms of uh, having a lower NII or or lower yields in first quarter of the year and then it bounces back uh, 
in in Q2 uh, 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 pretty high. Uh, so, uh, is there is there any uh, trend in terms of repayments uh, being less in in first quarter or the bullet payments being relatively low in the first quarter and then it uh, bounces back in uh, Q2? Uh, yeah, almost you answered. It's a, uh, sometimes in quarters also it makes a small, slight difference. 21, 20, 22, etc. I think we should not uh, throw too much light on that. Finally, we should see that our uh, NIM, etc. or the interest spread is protected. That's what we are trying to do. So sometimes uh, uh, there is a variation of 1%, 1.5%, quarter on quarter, etc. And by year end, as you said, by year end we should be able to do better. But then uh, even 21, 22 is a very good yield. Even 21 is good, 22 is too good. So, being there itself is good, uh, something very good and uh, very good to achieve. No, absolutely, sir. My question was not on uh, uh, maybe quantum of yield, uh, but in, in FI 20 per se, uh, in first quarter we uh, had a 3% degrowth in NII and then next quarter it was 21% sequential growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I was just asking about the phenomena. So when, when the business also picks up or the uh, the uh, interest yield also it should pick up it should pick up. Yeah, sir, that helps. Thank. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ankush Agarwal from DP Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So, again, on the yields, like we have earlier mentioned that our yields range from like twelve percent to twenty four percent, right? So. What are the factors that determine the end rate that will charge the customer? So, uh, we have different schemes, different seasons. Sometimes we give a lower yield. Some school opening season, we can give a uh, lower yield. Some other uh, festival season, we can charge a higher yield. So, it is just uh, uh, geography specific, uh, season specific, etc. We have. So, we actually have to keep the customers also happy. Sometimes now we are, we, can't, I, we cannot advertise in the newspaper that we are giving loans at 22%, etc. What we have to advertise is we are giving at 11%, 10%. So, we give at 11% also some loans. Others we give higher yes. rates. So, we have to be, I should say, these are all competitive teaser rates, etc. We have to offer here and there. Then only we can keep the uh, customers happy and uh, probably excited, excite our staff also because they also shouldn't come and say, sir, some other bank is giving at lower rate or customers are going there. So we have to compete there also. So it's a daily, daily routine, sir. Right, right. So it's mostly like market dynamics and competitive. Ah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, right. So secondly, I wanted to understand the liquidity requirements of business. Right. Given that the short term nature of our loans, there will always be a large inflows and outflows of cash. So, does this result in a situation wherein a certain level of liquidity is sitting idle during the transition phase of the loan? Is that understanding correct? I think we answered it once or twice also. Keeping some liquidity at this time, it helps in the growth. If, there is, if growth is really coming and we need money, sometimes this. Right, right. No. They are not the second. The second point is that keeping liquidity is also good for us. And uh, third is. Uh, I wanted to say something before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what I was coming from is I understand that you are doing it to manage uh, the growth uh, requirements and this kind of thing. What I was saying that there is a built-in scenario in the business itself wherein you know the loans are going in and out constantly and that it results in a situation within the lot of buffer of liquidity that gets accumulated. Yeah, I was going to answer that only. See, uh, if you are giving a loan for three months or two months, the loan is being paid back and I have a right. mark, to, mark to mark, I have a loan, I have a borrowing also for three months. Then it means right. that the loan etc. gets extinguished, my deposit also gets extinguished. That's not the question here. We have to keep on giving loans because our loan churns in four months. So we have to be every day, so many, so many people will come and repay. The same day we have to give loan also. So if finally if you, uh, if you, if you are going to stop the business, it is nice. Fine, everybody will pay, everybody will repay. But then if you are going to continue the business, then we need to keep on giving loans. If it, the day you stop giving loans, then everything will come down. Of course, finally, there will not be any loss. The, the whole thing will get back. But then the business will not be there. So that is why we need to keep on giving loans. So that is why we can't mark the loan as a three-month loan and take a three-month deposit or three-month 
Boroi. That's the problem. That's the issue which I said. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, we will take one last question. That's from the line of Digan Tharia from Green Edge Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. So you explained really well that gold loan is a very operationally intensive business. And everyone in the market knows that Muthud Finance has mastered this business very well. So, do you see any pressure on your employees because, you know, a lot of your competitors are opening new branches or, you know, trying to introduce Gold Loan as a product in their branches. So, is there a big competition in the market for your employees and, you know, what as a company, are we probably going some extra mile to maybe retain them, reward them? And, you know, are we running more schemes than usual because of the competition? So, if any, any color you can give on this particular thing, that would be useful. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you said, everybody worth the name wants to start a gold loan business today. And the easiest way is to take some managers or some other people from Muthut or some other good company and start the business. But then, as you also said, it is a very operationally intensive, operationally challenging business. It looks very fine from uh, outside, but uh, operationally, everything is a challenge. Everything is a challenge, whether it is the uh, keeping the gold, taking the gold, checking the gold, dealing with customers, auctioning it. Account, everything is a challenge and uh, people just sometimes forget that just by getting two or three people from our staff, maybe paying them some 20-30% extra, they can do business. Uh, but uh, quickly they will understand it is not possible. Now for employee retention etc, uh, many of our good employees are, are actually, uh, they, they have a lot of trust and confidence in us and they just don't jump the ship when somebody shows a carrot, just a carrot, they may not jump. So we also keep lot of employee engagement programs, rewards, recognitions, incentives, etc. We keep them, try to keep them happy. But all said and done, there are people who are trying to poach some of our stuff. We are aware of it. But uh, what can I do on that? But uh, we see that uh, we retain the good people with us. So it is not a good practice to poach people. But there are some companies who are trying to do that, uh, which is also unfair. Okay. Right. So, sir, and any, any other things you are doing to, like, you know, just, and, you know, more marketing at the branch level or, or, you know, more schemes or more than what we usually do because of this excess competition phase that we are right now seeing? No, it is not because, see, I don't think we see a competition from these other NBFCs, etc., uh, the banks, etc., everybody is there. But uh, we keep uh, we keep uh, devising newer and newer schemes. Today, some schemes we give us 99 paisa, 99 percent, 99 paisa interest. That is about 11.9 percent. So we have to advertise. We have to keep the staff also motivated. Staff also challenging because somebody shouldn't come and say State Bank of India is offering at this price. So customers are going from here to there. So we have to have a scheme for them also. But finally, we try to see that we are able to protect our Blended yield, that is what we are trying to do. And I think to a great extent we have been able to protect that yield. Going forward also we will devise some good strategies in between to see that uh, we retain our employees, we keep them happy, we retain our customers also. That's more important than the employee is also the customers. If the customers are there, then things can happen. So we have some things, uh, uh, customer centric as well as employee centric to do these things and I, I'm sure we should be able to tide over this thing. Earlier also, about 10 years back also, we had the same issue. Everybody jumping into this uh, soon after our IPO, when there was a lot of visibility on Muttut and Gold Loan and Profit and all these things. But then it also fizzled out after one uh, after a year or so, probably. This may fizzle out, may not fizzle out. But then let us see. We are there to uh, see competition also. I think that's our job here. Uh, Digan, probably I don't know whether you have seen that news. You know, one large institution where you know a big fraud has happened. You know, some the the branch manager or the employee, you know, has replaced some four hundred or five hundred packets, and that institution suddenly you know trying to grow uh, big. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, fraud happening in about three hundred four hundred packets. It's a very large amount. So I don't want to uh, name the entity, but. No, those are the risk involved, you know. Just because uh, you have people and money, you know, this doesn't work, you know. 
Right, right. So, sir, I'm sure you know you guys have seen cycles, and you know you have a great process around it. So, you know, competition or no competition, you two three keep doing well. So, best wishes to all the team. You guys have done a really great job in the last twelve months. Uh, Thank apart you, from thank you. Thank you. I now hand the floor back to Mr. Kunal Shah from ICC Securities for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thanks the entire top management team of uh, Muthur Finance for such uh, elaborative uh, answers uh, uh, to all the questions, and thanks all the participants for participating on the call. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Kunal. Thank you, participants. Happy Onam for having Onam this month here. Oh, happy, uh, happy Onam, Onam, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICS Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now.